everybody. Chris, Four Directions Bushcraft. Um, I'm just filming a series of short little videos on uh, first aid in the wilderness. Um, and I'm going to do a video on punctures. It's real, real simple. It almost um, coincides with the bleeding control uh, that I did with. Um, uh, you know, if you have a bad cut or a bad puncture that's bleeding really bad, um, or an impalement uh, that's bleeding really bad, you know, you wanna you wanna close off the, for instance, this brachial artery. You would want to close that off if you had a bad cut down below, uh, below it. Femoral artery as well that runs right here through your groin, down your down your um, between your hamstring and your and your quad. Um, that you would have to you would have to also uh, hold pressure on that if you had a bad cut um, on your knee on your uh, tibia fibia or calf or, or wherever so holding pressure and uh, tourniquets and uh, bandaging is your number one um, your number one treatment for those those types of injuries and until you can get some help uh, so keep that in mind um, with impalements or puncture wounds um, on the uh, on the ambulance and the trucks we carry uh, petroleum gauze which is that petroleum gauze it comes in this tin foil um, wrapper which is a multiple use for signaling if you needed it or the petroleum itself, good for starting fires. Uh, what else could you use it for? Well, impalements, so, or uh, puncture wounds. So we put these on um, as uh, occlusive dressings uh, for puncture wounds to the chest. Uh, so we will put this on and then we'll tape three sides, leave one side open for the air to escape. Uh, we will put these on, you know, chest, puncture chest wounds, any chest wounds or anything. Uh, they're good for that. Um, you can pick these up through through Amazon, I do believe, as well. Um, but multiple uses in these, so I carry one around uh, in case you do get a puncture wound. So you're going to want to put this on there. Uh, you can put your moss on there if you don't have any other dressings. You can um, put your, your absorption pad over the top of it or your roll. Of cling and then I always carry three inch tape real tight three inch tape around it uh, all these uh, punctures and lacerations are going to be bandaged really tight um, and then of course simply try to calm yourself down that's going to be the hardest part uh, you're going to be out here alone maybe maybe with a friend uh, you're going to want to stay calm uh, therefore lowering your blood pressure lowering your heart rate and your respirations uh, therefore controlling bleeding um, in a, in a physio um, physiological way as well as a, as a as a physical way so internally you want to control yourself and uh, your body's going to respond to the cut um, and to the panic as well um, your body secretes a epinephrine which is adrenaline and uh, that causes vasoconstriction and uh, your body actually tries to control that bleeding through vasoconstricting um, your blood vessels so it'll it'll shut down your blood vessels in the lower extremities and in the in the in the limbs uh, peripheral limbs and stuff so your body is amazing tool and it, and it does a lot of the work for you but you have to keep yourself calm in these situations snake bites spider bites bee stings those situations uh, can be a little tricky snake bites you know they always used to say cut it suck the venom out and all that no you don't do that you uh, what you do in a, in a snake bite situation the very main thing you can do is try to identify the snake as as, as best as you can um, the very second thing the the second thing you're gonna want to do keep yourself calm if you are unable to keep yourself calm in a situation like that, 
you're going to end up feeling that venom and, and, and a lot quicker, a lot more quickly. You're going to, you're going to, uh, your heart rate's going to be up. You're going to be rushing around. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to do that because it's going to pump that venom through your circulatory system that much quicker. You want to try to stay calm, walk, try to, try to get out, try to get your ass out of that situation, um, you know, as quick as possible. Now, easier said than done. <laughs> I've never been bit by a snake out in the wild. Uh, I've seen many of them, but never been bitten by one. And I'll tell you, if I got bitten by a copperhead, we have a lot of those out here in Missouri. If I gotten bitten by a copperhead, I'm going to be freaking out. But the thing is, you know, in order to help yourself, you're going to have to try to keep calm. And um, it's going to be tough, but adapt and overcome, and, and, and you'll get your get yourself out of there quickly. Now, bee stings, wasp st wasp stings, and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm not allergic to those things. Uh, a lot of people are really highly allergic to them and can go into what's called anaphylaxis shock. Anaphylaxis shock is uh, the allergic reaction to the venom of a bee sting. It can cause a uh, closing of your airway, so your 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 you'll have bronchial spasm. Your airway will shut, um, lower airways and your upper airways. So you'll you'll develop uh, what's called strider, and when you try to breathe, it'll be like really high pitched uh, wheezing sounds. Uh, that's upper airway closure. So bee stings will will cause people to go into anaphylactic shock. Obviously, swelling of the airways. Um, uh, swelling of the tongue, uh, swelling of the spot that that you were stung in. Uh, a lot of a lot of the bees around here will leave their stinger inside of you. Um, so if you do locate a bee sting, you just take your knife and you scrape upwards towards the bee stinger to remove the stinger. Um, a lot of uh, people use credit cards. Uh, to do the same thing you just scrape upwards to remove that stinger and um, you want to do that as quickly as possible because the stinger will stay in you and it will pulsate and as it pulsates it's delivering more and more of that venom a lot of us aren't um, aren't allergic to bee stings so we don't we don't necessarily have to worry oh you know I just got stung by a bee really no big deal but if you do know that you are allergic to bee stings you should carry an epinephrine pin around with you and uh, again epinephrine is adrenaline um, the concentration is different when we're using it outside of an IV so it's a uh, it's a uh, 1 to 1,000 ratio instead of the the 1 to 10,000 ratio so 1 to 1,000 ratio usually you stab it in your leg and you can self administer that if you know that you're allergic to bee stings so carry that around and I'm sure those of you that are allergic to bee stings know that already um, if you're not allergic to bee stings, still you want to remove that uh, stinger as quickly as possible because you will get some swelling and some um, some histamine um, uh, response. Your skin will respond to that. Um, again, if you do get that, uh, again, moss is good. Um, yarrow, uh, the yarrow and plantain is good. I have some dried out here. It's winter time, so I can't actually show you the plant. They're all dead. Um, Plantain is good for antihistamine, so those are good for the little bee stings and stuff. Spider bites, I'm not so good with spider bites. Now, I've never had a patient that has had a spider bite. I've never had a spider bite out in the wilderness. Usually it takes uh, a little bit of time for a spider bite to re react to you. Um, I know we have a lot of brown recluses out here. Um, brown recluse have real small mouths, and they need to be pinched up against you. Like That's why they, they hide in blankets, and when you cover up with the blanket it'll actually be pinched up against your skin and therefore it will bite you uh, brown recluses uh, their bites uh, I know they affect uh, people from the inside out so it actually will rot your skin away black widows yeah well black widow spider bites um, a little bit different you know uh, if you know you normally you're gonna feel that uh, if you are sleeping um, and you don't wake up after being bit, uh, your skin will start to react to any kind of uh, spider bite. You'll you'll itch, uh, you'll see redness, you'll see uh, sometimes a halo 
uh, with the brown recluse bite, especially you'll see a halo around it, uh, red and white. It'll look really weird. So um, obviously get yourself some help after that. Um, as far as snake bites and spider bites, the snake bites are, are the ones that we can we can treat the most. Um, the, the bee stings we can treat as well, but snake bites are almost uh, up to the patient to calm themselves down and, and, and get themselves out of that situation. Um, you know, the tourniquet on a snake bite, um, let's say if I got bit right here on the, on the, on the calf uh, next to my tibia or fibula, uh, and I and I want to uh, try to uh, tourniquet up here um, with the thought of stopping the venom it will not work uh, you know the bad part about that is if you do tourniquet real quick on there um, and then you release the tourniquet later the thought is that you will get an um, get a large dose of venom then uh, like you slowed the venom down but then once you release this you'll all of a sudden get a real surge of venom in in you now you're not gonna stop the venom um, if a snake bites you it's already in your blood system it's uh, as soon as they bite you it has it has been um, it, it goes septic real quick um, you know you're not gonna remove the venom if you cut the, the wound and suck the wound out, you're not gonna remove the venom. You might get a little residual venom that's uh, already on the outside of your leg off, okay? But you're, you're not gonna stop the, the venom. Once you're bit, the best thing you can do, bandage that wound, put pressure on that wound, and calmly, calmly, calmly try to get yourself out of that situation and to help to a hospital. Um, so, anyway, few thoughts on first aid uh, it's kind of hard, hard to show you uh, everything uh, without obviously a patient being here with with the signs and symptoms of, of what I'm talking about but you know a good overview of, of, of some things that you can use uh, to help you um, get yourself out of those situations now along with my med kit um, I carry rubber bands I carry hand warmers, I carry a mylar blanket, thermal blanket, and also, last but not least, my compass. Get yourself out of there, right? Uh, again, I, I did mention my whistle, so if I do fall down and break both legs, break one leg, break my back, got to signal for help first. Um, and uh, when spring comes around, I carry an ace bandage as well. Ace bandages, obviously, wrap it up, hold pressure. Um, as spring comes around, I'm going to get into more of the plants that you can use for um, a survival uh, first aid situation. And plants that you can use just to drink uh, in, in the wild as teas and stuff like this. So, um, edible plants uh, series, I'll be doing that. 